Support for this show, Politics and Right, comes from politicsandright.com, publishers of How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. It's worth it, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and other books written by Egberto Willis. Welcome to Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning to the great state of Texas. Good morning to Northeast Texas, Southeast Texas, Northwest Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana, and to every nook and cranny receiving the signals from our 100,000 watt transmis- uh, transmitter going into those magical boxes known as radios. And of course, AKA the Howard Reynolds machines that still work anyway. Good morning to the entire world. Sometimes it's evening. Otherwise, good morning. Getting our signals via the internet. Also, or formerly known as the ARPANET, created by whom? You the people, your tax dollars, your intellect, and everything else, but now basically controlled by a few billionaires in which they use to try to mislead too often. Anyway, folks, I have a quick step before I go to the studio. I want to tell all folks out there, and specifically progressives, the idea, the message here is positivity and that This election is in your hands. This election for 2024 is not lost. It's not won. It's all dependent on you. And guess how yours truly feels right now? Great, empowered, and ready to go out there and win for the American people. Remember that I've been seeing too many people sit back there and say, oh my God, the polls, the polls, the polls. I want to remind you of one thing. In 2012, even, by the way, Kamala is up in the polls for those who want Kamala. Let me just let you know that. That is the overall aggregate. But let me tell you, numero dos, when Obama won by substantial numbers over Mitt Romney, she was uh, uh, Obama was down three in the Gallup polls. There are certain things that people must remember about polling and something they must remember about the American population. And that is you cannot determine the things that people must keep hidden because of past experiences, because of social realities. And that is the issue this year. And the magical word that I'm going to spend and say to everybody, women, women, and women. Without further ado, let's move it to the studio. Well, good morning, Egberto. How are you this morning? I am I doing great. Yeah, you were telling me you were all energized and all full of uh, VIP and vigor which I like to hear because I am actually not full of VIP and vigor. <laughs> Just dragging through, the, dragging through the morning, and it is another fine day at the radio. Jack, what you got, man? Oh, not much. I, I noticed uh, when I drove by the polling uh, place in Baycliff uh, yesterday that, uh, well, as I rode by, three women came out and only one man, one man. So I kind of said, hey, <laughs> maybe maybe the women are going to do it for us. <clears throat> oh, you know, they are. They're energized because it's like, OK, you took away our right. We're going to take you out of office. All right. Works for me. All right. Well, I, I, I can, only thing I can do is hope. <clears throat> mm-hmm. OK, here's the uh, here's uh good morning, Egberto. Here's your good morning, uh, my news brother. Today, good news from Harris. She will raise taxes on the rich and cut taxes for the poor, the opposite of what Donald Trump will do. And CNN's Jake Tapper deconstructs conspiracy theories pushed by Trump, Musk, and Marjorie Taylor Greene and calls them out for the unpatriotic lies they tell and the unpatriotic lies they are. Anyway, folks, today is Aquino Day. Of course, it's Thursday. And Brother Aquino is in the house. Talk to me, my dear brother. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, studio. Good morning, global uh, audience. We hope to hear from you uh, today with both your pledges and your your insight. And uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, the uh, uh, local 
uh, local election matters with Houston Democracy Project, HoustonDemocracyProject.com, and uh, anything that you as the caller would like to discuss. Anyway, folks, look, uh, uh, remember our telephone number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. You know, Neil, last uh, about 530 in the afternoon, I think it was a, or maybe a little bit before that, you know, I'm doing my stuff on the screen and bam, no Internet. And, you know, I use Tacos, which is the fastest Internet in town. It's one gig Aye. in both directions, all fiber. Haven't been able to get on until early, early this morning to get all this stuff done. So I'm sort of erratic in some of the things that we're doing, but we're fighting through. Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on I, I, I love your blog. Uh, you have almost like a map. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? Well, because I just talked about time. Um, I, uh, a daily blog at HoustonDemocracyProject.com. And when, when early voting started, so early voting is ongoing and uh, runs through November 1st. And uh, a few days ago on the 21st, uh, uh, it began on the 21st. I made a post and I just took to, I talked about four things. Um when early voting began, the first thing is that I, I made for myself a list of people I would trust um, in an authoritarian crisis and just in stressful days ahead. Um, friends, family, people I've met in Houston politics and activism. And uh, I've added to the list contact information for them outside of the big social media platforms. And I want to, uh, you know, I, this is a point we've made repeatedly. Um, none of these platforms will be something you can trust um in a crisis and none of them will be reliable you see how meta facebook instagram threads has strangled political content uh twitter is a sewer um so i've made that list and this election i think in many ways we are positive and hopeful today and it's true it's also that this election is a mental health crisis it's as stressful <laughs> as could be and i took early voting as a spur, uh, you know, to do something for myself, look out for myself and the people I value and, and trust. And it's not about being scared or intimidated. It's just about, it's just about being ready. And we do, we do need to be ready. Secondly, um, I want to be able to help people to vote. Pretty much everyone I know uh, is going to vote. Um, I suspect I know how they're going to vote. But I just want to point out a couple things that anywhere you are in the county, you can vote your local ballot. So well, let's say that you are in Laporte. Uh, you live in Laporte, but you happen to be in Klein, right? And this this county is as big as a country. Uh, you you can walk in there in Klein and vote your Laporte ballot. There are 88 early polling places. You can go to harrisvotes.com. So there's just something you could share with anyone. Someone says, I'm going to vote or I, I, I can't vote this day. Anywhere in the county, you can vote. And early voting goes through November 1st. So those are two facts you can share and help people vote. Third, we've got to um, protect uh, the vote we have. If you go to the Harris County Democratic Party website, they are still looking for poll watchers and they are looking for people to man their voter protection uh, hotline. And you go to Harris County uh, Democratic Party, just Google it, and you can you can be part of that. And fourth, I wanted to point out our clerk, Tanisha Hudspeth. Um, she counts the votes. And I have had a, a sort of a, a private conversation with her and seen her talk publicly. And she is ready for all scenarios. And you know what they do. They want to um, they're making up every story. You know, um, the, the, the voting, the, the, your votes being flipped. Uh, they're not counting your votes right, whatever. So I want you to just give a thought today to our Harris County clerk, Tanisha Hudspeth. Anyone who listens to this show knows that we are slow to praise elected officials, um, you know. But she is doing she's prepared. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, by, I mean, she's prepared a that the process is correct from the Harris County Clerk's office. And B, if there's a situation, you know, she's been open that, you know, she has hired security. Um, I was at the LGBT caucus meeting a couple of weeks ago. She was the guest speaker and she is ready. So the four steps that I envisioned, um, I, I, I did something for myself. I looked out for myself and others. I have the information to help other people vote. If you want to go to the Harris County Democratic Party, they're doing things not just to get out the vote, but to protect the vote. And keep in mind the process, the clerk. Don't let anyone tell you 
that the votes aren't being counted correctly. Don't let anyone make up some story. Um, the clerk is honest and ethical, and she's running a good operation, and she's ready. I love Tanisha Hitzfeld. I mean, I, I've spoken to her several times, and she is one person that is on the ball. Uh, and when I say yeah. on the ball, she's making sure from security right back. Now, uh, I, I want to, uh, since we're talking about voting, I want to uh, po uh, point out something. Liz Cheney was campaigning along, doing uh, several town halls with uh, uh, VP Kamala Harris uh, uh, this week. And one of the things she pointed out, and specifically to her um, Republican brothers and sisters, because we're in such a polarized time because of some hoodlums and, and, and thugs that we have out there uh, that are trying to intimidate people. She made sure to tell her core that, remember, when you go into that voting booth, your vote is between you and your God and that voting machine. Nobody knows what you vote. It's between you, your God, and your, uh, your vote machine or your lack of God, depending on whatever religion you are or, right. or whatever. That's what it is. And in, in effect, she's telling people you have permission to vote your conscience, to vote what is best for your family and for you. However, what you, you mentioned earlier, my brother, about the sewer that, the, that Twitter and other online uh, entities have become. And, and here's what we have on the Internet. And I want all of you listening to look out for this and to tell the people you know about this. There are now ads going out by third parties and we know from coming from overseas that are telling Americans when you vote, we know how you voted. Those are lies put out there. And in effect, if it is found that some local entities are doing such, we can actually hit them up for electoral fraud, messing with the electorate. But as a matter of fact, I want everybody listening to The Voice right now to understand those messages are there to try to intimidate you. Nobody knows how you voted. Women specifically, please note this. One, nobody knows how you voted. Other information here is we have the voting polls very secure. They're also putting out ads there to kind of intimidate you from attempting or going to vote. Again, your vote is private. Nothing that you read online that will tell you otherwise is possible. Now, also, the day of the elect the election is on this next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday. Don't let anybody try to change the date of the election. We had a caller call into our station here and attempt to mislead you into voting on the wrong day. Right. We will never allow that. And I'm telling you, you, you make sure and counteract and validate everything before you vote. Before I go to uh, Spike and then uh, Harry, let me go back to Brother Neil to see if uh, he wants to add anything to the discourse before we move on. I do. Let me. I'll make three very quick points. The last connected to the pledge drive. The first one you mentioned, Liz Cheney. That reminds us uh, as we talk about uh, that our local public officials could also uh, Republicans could also distance themselves from Trump. Um, authoritarianism will require a local infrastructure. And we need our elected officials here to distance themselves. Secondly, when we talk about, you know, the, in the voting booth, we don't know what you're doing. You know, just because you you may say, oh, I know that that's obvious. Just don't assume what anyone knows. Think about uh, anyone, you know, who could use that information. Um, don't presume that you that what others know is what, you know, help people vote. Third, in terms of the pledge, um, there's been recent stories, the Los Angeles Times is not going to endorse in the presidential election because their owner told them not to. I read a story just this morning that the Washington Post has not endorsed for president, and there was speculation Jeff Bezos has, for the moment, stopped them from doing that. Here at KPFT, um, you know, this is a source of free and independent media. Uh, this is a voice that's been here for, for, for many years, 53 years, I believe, and that will continue with your pledge to be here. So, it doesn't just help the station. It helps our local community. It helps you. This is a free and trusted voice of information. We've seen that the big, we talked earlier a second ago about how Meta and Facebook strangle everything, political content, 
Twitter's a sewer, a right wing sewer. The Washington Post, legacy traditional media, which still offers some, some good things, but they their voice is strangled by their ownership. Here, you're you're the owner. You're paying for it. You're going to get a free uh, service. And I don't think there's a more important time where we can have a free, uh, uh, independent source of of media uh, and 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 public voice. So please pledge. Thank you for that, Neil. I didn't know that uh, the post wasn't going to endorse this year. You know, well, they have. No, it just said that so far they haven't, and uh-huh. there was speculation as to why. The Los Angeles Times made a call. They had it. They were gonna. In fact, the editorial page editor of the L.A. Times resigned. Uh, she resigned yesterday um, in response, or, or, or over the week, in response to that decision. But that's not happening here. And here, you know, if you listen to our Thursday segment and 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 Monday through Friday, not just do we give our views, but we also name the names of of, of the politicians we're addressing for good or ill. And we need to be able to continue. I can't imagine a more important time. And in terms of the local thing that we do here every, you know, I'm discussing Houston City Council. A few weeks ago, we discussed the sidewalk ordinance. We've gotten into, in, in, in the year that I've been here on Thursdays, we've discussed so many local issues. I was, I was at the West Gray Multi-Service Center uh, handing out an advocacy card uh, for a group. I won't mention who they are. And I, I, I tried to hand it to some guy and he, you know, he talked about, his views. He gave me an he gave me an in, an insight into his views. Then he walked two people down, uh, and he said he told this person he wanted to interview them, and he was with a local radio station. I'm not I'm not going to say which one it is, but it's one uh, it's one where there's some right wing programming. So he actually gave me. He says he's you know he's he's a journal I, whatever it is. He's given me this right wing statement. Walks down the the at West Gray, two or three people to another person who was engaged in some advocacy. And wants to interview him, and he'd already told me he was a right winger, right? So it's not journalism. Um, there's 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 very little journalism from our Houston radio stations, or or or, or honest discussion of opinion, uh, uh, non right wing discussion of opinion. But here here there is, and it, and it needs your support. And you, when you do it, you're helping yourself. Let's go to Spike line number one. All right, like hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine, my brother. Talk hey, to me. Hey, man. Good, good. Hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, <clears throat> would you say that uh, technology today is way more advanced than it was, say, in the 80s and the 90s? And I know it is, but I mean, w- w- you would agree with that, I know. Yes, sir, I would. Okay. Uh, then, all right, now. You remember the hanging chads? The hanging chads. Yes, yes, I painful. Yeah, for Gore, you voted for Gore, but your your vote is going to to to, to Bush. Man, man, and the and the technology is so far advanced, and you got and these men are are making these machines and stuff. Man, see, I'm I'm very leery of 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 what of of this, you know. Uh, I mean, you don't, that don't bother you to think that. Uh, I am glad. Yes. I, I understand your question, Spike. Spike, I, I, I know where you're going and thank you because what you're saying is so very important. Brother Spike, let me tell you what, what the deal is. I love what we have currently, what Hidalgo and the others have done in Harris County. We have what's called a paper trail, right? When you do, when you're done getting your vote and it comes out of your machine, that's a paper trail. You get something that then gets read by another device. So we could manually look at that piece of paper that you put in your machine, compare it. In fact, when you get your uh, ballot out of the machines in Harris County, you can look at it and see who you voted for, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's it right there. Uh, there's no tech. Let, let me finish. And then, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. So go you, ahead. you can you can go ahead and see that the, that the vote was there, and then it goes into another machine and scan the person man in the other machine. You can make sure they don't see your ballot as it is. As it goes into scan and drops into a hole. All right. So. If later on the, the machine says one number and we think that number is wrong, 
we can go back to the paper trails. In other words, what I'm saying, my brother, is technology is there that we should be able to get the results of the election immediately. And if it's in doubt, we should be able to count the vote later on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Um, Does all the states have that, like you said, this year? Does, yes. Does all the states? That. And, and that it's not thing? everywhere. It is not everywhere. And that is something that I think the. I'm sorry. I'm, I, we can't. Uh, you finish and then I'll talk. I can't. We can't talk over each other. Go ahead, sir. Oh, oh, no, no. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, man, you know, all the states don't have. I wonder why. And, the, and, and they know you, what's going on. Right. You know just. Happen. Wait, you just answered the question. You, you, you asked the most intelligent question. Why? Because in chaos, we can steal elections. OK, where there is chaos, we it, they don't look. There are a, there are a lot of people who don't look there. We have the technology to make things perfect, near perfect. In other words, we, we go ahead and we have paper trail as well as automation. Those that combination is perfect because we can count if we have any doubt about the automation but and it's easy to do it the reason they don't do it is because they want the ability for fallibility so you you nailed it harris county solved that problem because we have real government i don't particularly like our system we could even make it better but at least it has the traceability factor in there anything else spike before i jump to let harry let me say this hey <clears throat> Man, with them powerful billionaires that want this man in there. I mean, that's why this man is allowed to say anything he wants to and nothing happens. You know, they want uh, well, to you know what? That. Spike, something. All right, Spike, I got to go, but let me just tell you something. Something yeah. is going to happen if you make it happen. I want folks, and this is something that I, I was on another forum. I was on uh, the Progressive uh, Democrats of America forum. And I heard some people in, uh, you know, this is probably a couple hundred people on this call. And I, I looked at, I, I, I got sort of upset with some of the people. Now, I, not uh, Upset is not the word. I said, look, nothing, uh, we will get exactly what we work for. And being concerned and worried doesn't win you a damn thing. There are more good people in America. There are more people who want good things for Americans out there. The thing about it is if you make people believe that they don't have uh, that they don't have agency, that they don't have authority, that they don't have the ability to move their own futures, then they sit back and do nothing leaders you know what leaders do brother spike leaders go out there and say this is still a democracy and this democracy is in your hands now do what you must do to maintain this democracy women and men who love women do what you must do to make sure women's rights are respected and kept People need to get that message from our leaders. And you know what you're going to get at Politics Done Right? You're going to get that message. Spike, thank you so kindly for calling in. I'm going to go to Harry. Thank you, you, brother. Let's go to Brother Harry, line number two. Good morning, Neil Aquino. Good morning, Alberto. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Howard. And good morning, Sandy. Well, um, as you know, Alberto, I've mentioned on this show, that I'm still registered in California and I printed out my California ballot and I'm looking at some, this is, these questions are for you and Neil Aquino. I'm looking at here at United States Senator and I'm looking at Adam B. Schiff and I'm looking here at some of these other things, um, 15th congressional district, uh, these, um, uh, other, other people and then state Senator. And my question is, how do I, I, I see here with Jill Stein and Rudolph where I know how they feel about Israel and they want an arms embargo, um, which I know they're not going to get, but I like the way they think. And I'm just wondering about these other people. Are these people 
thinking the way Jill Stein, Rudolph Ware, and Dr. Cornell West, who I'm going to vote for, they want an arms embargo. The, are these people like uh, Adam B. Schiff, who's running for the senator, is he pro-Israel? Is he thinking the way Kamala Harris is? Uh, and um, Joe Biden, that, you know, two-state solution, or, or does Adam B. Schiff want a um, a uh, permanent ceasefire? And I just want to know, I mean, I know I can pull up websites, but I was wondering if you guys had any ideas where I can go to find out what their stance is on Israel and um, the Gaza and Lebanon war. Okay, uh, let me answer, let, let me answer it this way. Um, first of all, I don't, I don't, have on on my uh, on my radar as far as these individuals what their policy is with Israel. Okay, I know what my feelings are with Israel and Palestine and Gaza, etc. And everybody knows that I support Israel. I support Palestine. I support a two state solution. I support a ceasefire, etc. But I'm I'm going to be honest and frank as I can. This election, this current election, uh, the, uh, is not, I want to say this uh, in, in uh, the best that I can with the, the proper, with the proper tonality. We don't have the power within this election right now for the Israel solution. Believe it or not, that is an Israeli Gaza uh, uh, solution that we supposed to that what we do is aid but as far as our voting on that issue it's it's sort of an academic issue we have to vote to get democracy maintained right now because absent that we can't help israel absent that we can't help palestine so what I try to tell people is all the, I mean, these, these are the lives of people that matter. The lives of Palestinians matter. The lives of Israelis matter. But the only way we can get an, a, a solution for that is to ensure that our lives in America as well, our democracy in America as well, matter. Because then we can do something about that of the others. And for that reason, and I've told you this uh, honestly, my dear brother Harry, for that reason, yes, I think uh, anybody voting for a third party here because of, and I, I say this with respect, but anybody voting for a third party and not on decision is not making a pragmatic vote for the country. And I know you may disagree with that, my brother, but uh, that is, uh, if, you, if you add it up scientifically, whether it's in California or Texas, because... This election requires a massive amount of voting to show that America does have an inclination. And we have to remember that. Go ahead. Uh, um, well, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah, but uh, oh, as you said, you know, you respect my decision. And I know uh, that we have to save the country. And, keep, and, and, I, I, and I hear you, Roberto, what you said last week that, you possibly could make it easier for Donald Trump to get elected. But I just, when I, like I said, Eberto, when I listen to Democracy Now! and I've heard all these interviews that these Judean people have been interviewed by uh, Amy Goodman, and then I know about these women and children who have nothing to do with Hamas, I can't, I, I have a bed here in Missouri City. Uh, Texas to sleep in at night. And when I know that these little boys and girls and uh, men and women who have been, their hospitals have been bombed, their schools have been bombed, their homes have been lost, and they have no place to go, I just can't vote for, uh, like I said, a Kamala Harris. Harry, Harry, I got you. Harry, I get, Harry, I get all of that. Harry, I get all of that. But let me just tell you something, okay? Uh, the fact of the matter is this. Uh, we, we, we don't, uh, this is not a, a popularity contest or this is not a, a contest of, I don't, when I'm voting, I'm not voting for me solely. I'm also right. voting for you. And let me just put it right. bluntly. If, if your vote makes somebody and, and, and 
I'm going to just make an assumption and you can tell me I'm wrong, right or whatever. But let's assume that you have some sort of a social security requirement, a Medicare requirement, a Medicaid requirement, whatever that may be. If your vote causes someone to get elected who affects that because you think that other person is not going is not fulfilling your values, then you voted against your own interest. Sit down and think about that, yeah. my dear brother. And then we'll talk another time because well, my lines are full. I, you, you get I have, I have it, but I know it's risky. It's risky. But I gotta yeah. put my conscience dead. I, I good. And if you if your conscience puts your health, you know, that is no different. Then the per, the, when we talk about, let's say, a right winger voting against their interests, and we think it is so crazy that they do that. I always say this. Too often we talk about our brothers and sisters on the right as being, oh, they, 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 they are voting against their own interests. Let me tell you something, brother. What you just said there, I'm going to ask you to think about it, and then let's talk about it tomorrow. And ask yourself if that isn't the same modal that we talk about when we talk about the right. But we'll talk tomorrow, Harry. I still love you, brother, but we'll talk you, tomorrow. I got to give somebody else another thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we'll talk, brother. Thank you, sir. So I want to thank Susan. Susan, thank you for that. Susan is a new uh, contributor. Uh, thank you so kindly for that contribution. I'm coming to Betty, Steve, Steve, and Johnny in a minute. Lines are completely full, but I want to give Neil. I, I, Neil, I'm sorry. I, I was supposed to throw it to you because I know you wanted to say something about brother Harry. Uh, uh, before you say, though, I want to just tell Harry. Harry, I, this there's no disrespect in, 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 you know, your vote is your vote is your vote. But also as a host, it's my responsibility to ask people to look at the entire picture and we have a whole bunch of women in america who uh also needs our vote go ahead neil please i I just say um i'll I'll be quick i don't want to get to the callers you know last week we got bogged down with jill stein when i was when i was on and it it, it, i got to admit it frustrated me a bit over the week you know jill stein first ran for governor of massachusetts in 2002 um i think this is her third time she is she's built nothing you know a, a green party should be about organizing This is her third go around. She's at 1%. She's built nothing. And I understand that um, people's anger over Israel and Gaza. I I get that. I share that anger. Trump will will let them, they will turn Gaza into a resort for Eric, for his children to come. I just want to emphasize, this is for real. And, And if you get, uh, if you get Trump and 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 the, the consequences, you won't get your life back. I, and I'm as cynical of, of the of I am as I, I assure you, I am deeply cynical. So much of this last year I've been on, I've criticized local Democrats at at the elected level, and and none of neither Roberto and I are shills for local uh, for for elected officials. We're not. I think any t- listening to this program, but please, I just, I just really implore people to move on from Jill Stein and to see the gravity of, of the moment. You know, I know Jill Stein personally. I, I, I put up a blog a couple, uh, about three days ago because of all this Jill Stein talk to let people see what she told me directly, you know, and, and understand that. But anyway, let's go to Kathleen line two. Haven't heard from Kathleen uh, b- before. Come on in, Kathleen. How are you doing this morning? Thank you so kindly, sister. Um, I agree with the thing about Israel and all of that. I'm not voting because of Israel, okay? But I want to talk about something else. There's somebody showing an ad on TV about the the babies. I'm a female. I've I've had babies. That's a horrible thing to look at. However... You also have to think about who got in there and made those films. And the next thing is this. I know a lot of people don't believe in the Lord, but according to what I read, there's nobody going to judge me besides him. Nobody. So whatever I do, it's my body that he gave to me, and he expects for me to take care of what he gave to me. We don't always do it. But whatever I do, that's between me and him. Nobody else, me and him, the doctor, you know, but me and him, the, the, mm-hmm. the three of us, him primarily, his grace is what I live Kathleen, with. Kathleen, 
Kathleen, I could not have said that any better. And that is the reason why we say it's choice. I don't care about the man sending the little pills and show the man taking one off and putting it in his bill for <laughs> so, But, you know, I'm just saying, don't let that sway you. Vote with a firm mind of what really is and what really could be if you vote the wrong way. So, ma'am, wow. ma'am, let me ask you, you just you just said you weren't voting because of Israel. You're not voting at all or you're not voting in the presidential race? No, 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 not that. I'm saying my vote will not be because of that. Oh, I, I would see, not dare vote for Mr. Trump. See, that's see. what I'm saying. Balance yes, it. Don't look at all this other stuff that people are throwing before you. Just like I said about the babies, that's a horrible thing to look at. But somebody got in there and filmed that. Right. Someone did. Uh, yeah, I, when I first saw that ad, I said, well, who is? When I first saw the ad, I said, well, who is Randall Terry? I don't know him. Right. right. But Randall Terry. Right. right. <laughs> Kathleen, Kathleen, I think your, your voice, Kathleen, your voice says it like no one else could have between you, your body and your God. Thank you so kindly, Kathleen, for those words of wisdom. Right. Sister. I, I have read two children by myself. Mm-hmm. With the Lord, I have problems. Thank you, ma'am. Kathleen, Kathleen, I'm still going. Kathleen, my lines are full. I got to go, but I want to thank you for those words of wisdom. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I've been have listening a- mostly. Thank you, sister. I appreciate you. Okay, let's go to Sister Betty. Come on in, Betty. I'm going to have to limit folks about a a minute or so. Come on in, Sister Betty. Okay, well, I'll, I want to let you know how I feel about the voting, but I also want to ask Aquino if he knows what's going on with Greg Abbott and his hospital thing that's going to go on. I wonder if he knew about that. How I feel about uh, voting. When you go vote, don't go against your good luck. And if you do, you're considered a dud, a D U D, a dud. <laughs> Only good hey, for a trade in, okay? Betty, thank you, sister. Thank you. Let me let Neil answer oh, that so we can go to the other call. I appreciate it. No, no, ma'am. Greg, Greg Abbott and oh, the Neil. hospital. I'm sorry. I mean, no. Neil, Neil, but he's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Neil's going to answer you now, Betty. Come on in, Neil. Uh, no, okay. ma'am. Greg, Greg Abbott and hospitals, no. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't. Is there a specific issue? Well, no, yeah, they're going to, he said, I uh, heard on that, that he's going to, in the ERs, he, everybody has to show a birth certificate. Oh, come, come November 1st, the, the, the ERs are required to ask you about your citizenship. Right, right. That's just, you know, right. They'll, they'll let you yeah. be afraid to come in the hospital. That, that's the ER, right? You got a gunshot wound. Right. I mean, I, I, I appreciate you bringing yeah, that up. Yeah, right. They don't care. You know, you're right. dying at the door. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Betty, thank you, Betty. Uh, Betty, we're we'll, we're going to cover that. Okay. We're going we're going to cover day. that Love another y'all. time. Love you too, Betty. Uh, folks, that is one of the most evil things I can see. When you're in most need, that is uh, that is a shame. Let's go to Moses. Come on in, Moses. I, I about a minute or so, Moses. Good morning, Good morning. sister. Number one, you are right. We need to help ourselves in order that we can help Israel. That battle in the Middle East belongs to God. We can't do anything about it. Now, at this point, we face a decision between a woman who is dedicated to returning the nation to its righteousness and health, and a man who, like Goliath, comes out every day to blaspheme the God we say we believe in. Y'all are hearing what he's saying. Number and number two, let us be the David who puts him down and move on to return the nation to righteousness. That's all I have to say. Thank you so kindly, Moses. You have a wonderful rest of your day. Let's go to Steve N. Steve N, come on in. Hi there. This is uh, Steve, and um, uh, Neil had uh, talked about uh, joining me in the uh, Herman Park and uh, demonstration that went on for 28 weeks. Uh, right. Vigil, um, 
And uh, I just want to say how important KF KPFT uh, is, uh, particularly now when democracy is in question and uh, everybody's voice is important and KPFT makes sure that that is heard. Um, also, I'd like to uh, thank Neil for his longtime support of democracy. And then uh, finally, uh, we uh, heard a lot of positivity out in the park about uh, um, the uh, attempt to save democracy through Kamala Harris. And uh, I just want people to know that this is not a uh, lost situation. And if everybody gets out and vote, then uh, we'll – uh, win the day and save our democracy. Okay, Steve, I, I just want to answer. Thank you. First of all, I, I honor uh, uh, Brother uh, Aquino here. That's why he's here every Thursday, because we know the work that he puts in into our democracy movement. Uh, I, I mean, I, I knew it from I met the brother. Now, the other thing is about uh, I, I, want to, I want to change the tonality of something that you said. This stuff isn't lost. That that gives the impression like it's like like, oh, could it have been lost? Here's the reality. We have to get away from the rhetoric and look at the math. I'm a math guy. I'm a numbers guy. OK, this stuff was even with all the numbers out here. This stuff is not has not been in question. They need to attempt to put it in question to have people have doubts. And when people have doubts, then they react that way. The numbers aren't there the numbers are, have always been there, and the numbers have been telling a story for a very long time. I just want to get that out there, Brother Steve. And, but, uh, you know, uh, let, but thank you so kindly, Steve. Uh, I, I need to let you go because we're up for time, but do you want to say a quick thing before I go to uh, Neil? Steve, that's to you. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, Neil. Come on in. Right. Neil. So so, Steve, it's so great to hear your voice. And, and Steve and I, uh, this was something Steve initiated. We stood in Herman Park um, for about 25 Saturdays um, with a sign that Steve printed on his own dime, dime that says, protect democracy, don't vote for Trump. He, he printed it during the time of the uh, his, his fight with Nikki Haley, his race with Nikki Haley. We got a ton of positive responses. And, and it's important that people see others like themselves willing to stand up for democracy, so I'm very appreciative, Steve. Steve is actually a professor and and uh, and and a, and a sharp guy and a, de a super decent guy. Thank you, Steve. If, if he's your friend, he's my friend. I know that for sure. Yeah, sharp and guy. Yeah. Our lines are full again. As you can see, this is an active program. Let's go to Patty. Come on in, Patty. Line number four. Good morning, Egberto. I'm a proud sustainer, and I encourage others. Uh, we are going to have either President Trump or President Harris. We won't have President Stein, West, or Williams. So as you're deciding who to vote for or not to vote, keep in mind that one of those candidates is a humanitarian who believes in peace for all, and the other was has said whatever the hell they want, the, the autocrats can do said that Putin's invasion of Ukraine was brilliant, and in his next term, he wanted to do that to Mexico. Make your vote count. This, it, everything rides on this election. Patty, I want, first of all, I want to thank you for being a contributor, a sustainer. But I mean, I, that could not, that is not only pragmatic, that is factual. And no protest vote, uh, it, it may make you feel good. But it does absolutely nothing for society. If you want to make a difference, if you really, really want to make a difference, do what we have been talking about for decades, Neil and I and, and many others. You make a difference in primaries. That's how our system works. There's another option. And you have to fight for these options. There's something called ranked file voting, where you vote for the people in the order that you want. So no vote is wasted. But a lot of politicians don't want that because, again, no vote is wasted. There are many things that we can solve. But right now, the way the system works, there, uh, Patty is as pragmatic as one can get. Thank you so kindly, Patty, for your uh, very smart and wise words. Thank you. 
Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Let's go to Una. Una, come on in line number six. Got to get these lines down. Come on in, Una. Yes, good morning. Um, you know, we can talk about pragmatism, but the America stands for democracy and human rights for all. And as a respect for human rights, we should not, we need to vote for a candidate who would not spend our tax dollars sending ammunition to kill innocent children and somebody who speaks out loud against it. Kamala hasn't done that. If you want us to vote for Kamala, she needs to stand up. She needs to stand up for the human rights of these children who are being burned alive by our tax dollars. I love this democracy and I want it to sustain, but my conscience is not going to let me vote for Kamala if she's not taking a st stronger stand for the Palestinian people. Oh, Una, Una I, I don't know if you're Palestinian or not. I'm not Palestinian. I'm not Jewish. I love my Palestinian brothers and sisters. I love my Jewish brothers and sisters. I don't want bombs sent to America. But when, uh, when Patty talks about pragmatism, I'm sorry, uh, my sister. She is absolutely right. You're, you having a protest vote and not voting for Kamala or Trump because neither one of, first of all, neither one of these folks can come out and say, we are going to uh, do X, Y, and Z with regards to Israel at all. So you, uh, look, I, I would love to make certain types of votes. I can't. I care too much about women. I care too much of, about your rights, Miss uh, Una. Uh, let me ask you a question, and I, I'm going to ask this just, you know, it may be a subjective question. Uh, are, you, are you Muslim, Arab, or any of that nature? Just, just I, I, and I, 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 yes, forgive I, me I, if I ask I, it incorrectly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm telling I'm you. Arab, if, your, yeah. if your vote for your conscience causes more Muslims or Arabs to die or to be deported or X, Y, and Z, is your vote a pragmatic vote? And that's the vote I am telling everyone that they must decide because I have to decide lesser of two evils. Yes, I have to decide if, if, if uh, my I, I, but let me let me just say this. You, let me just say this. Wait, wait, hold on a second, Neil. Hold on a second. I want to say this. This is a. My dear sister, my dear sister, I, my dear sister, I'm one of, I, my dear sister, I want Neil to answer. My dear I'm, I'm sister. A, I'm going to say this. Go ahead, you know, Neil. Trump is 78 years old. I, I just say this, ma'am. You obviously you can vote your own conscience. Your base, I mean, Trump is 78 years old. You are basically voting for J.D. Vance and Elon Musk to run this country. I'm you are just, you, ma'am, just let me finish, ma'am, because, um, ma'am, Ma'am, one, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. You got to let me finish, ma'am, because you're. I'll be frank. Neil, go ahead, you're go voting. To, you're voting to end. Um, the, 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 you're voting for JD Vance and Elon Musk. You're voting at this point. I understand the Israel issue. There are a lot of issues. There are a life and death issues. There are human rights issues. Uh, um, it's pure out white supremacy. You're, you're going to bring. Ma'am, just let me finish, ma'am, because there just seems sure. to be, if you really want to challenge power, ma'am, there's a fascist threat right here. And there's a fascist, they will, they do, they will deport Muslims. They will bomb them. You, you can vote your own conscience. I want you to understand that for, uh, uh, for many of us, I'm in my mid, I'm in, I'm 57. There's a substantial part of me that says if Trump wins, a substantial part of my life is over. We will never get from under it. It will take 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Vance is 39, 40 years old. Uh, uh, Elon Musk, these are straight up white I think Supreme Court as well, sir. Supreme the Court. Supreme Court, you can do what you need to do, ma'am. You are, you, your, if your conscience is to bring this white supremacist administration to throw out every decent thing. And I am no shill for the two party system and all this. You, you're going to just I'll tell you, ma'am, you, you need to do what you need to do. But that's those are the stakes. I respect Una. I honestly okay, do. Now, Una, whether you believe it or not. Uma, 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 I respect you. No kidding. No doubt. Whatever. But I'm saying anybody who says uh, any. 
Go ahead, go ahead, Una, please. I'm go sorry. ahead, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to take 30 seconds. Um, standing up for human rights, speaking the truth when the odds are against you is very difficult. And Kamala Harris is not doing that. She's not standing up against the authority, people who are basically controlling this government, people who are controlling the money in this country, unfortunately. No, 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 no. No, let her finish. Neil, let her finish. Neil, 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 I know exactly Neil, what that means, Neil, ma'am. Let her finish. I know exactly Neil, what that let her, means, ma'am. Neil, let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish. Go ahead, Una, please. Yes, it's throughout history, people who have made changes have had to stand up against authority, against uh, uh, authoritarian rule, against uh, people who would take away their uh, livelihoods. I know, I know that if uh, Trump comes into power, I may not be able to live in this country. That would be a small sacrifice because my conscience would not allow me to vote for somebody who doesn't have the guts to, to stand up and say, that our tax dollars should not fund the bombs that are right. killing. I'm gonna, look, because we, uh, Una, because we have a lot more people, I'm just going to make the final My uh, name statement is Huma. on oh, Huma. M-A. Huma. I'm sorry. I, I, it's not a it's not a mistake that oh, I no, made. That's fine. I'm sorry. I didn't correct you before. OK, Huma. Here, here's what I'm trying to tell you, ma'am. And I, I, I hope you'll call back. At another time when we're not pressured for in fund drive and this otherwise, because I do want to have this discussion with you because it's an important discussion. So I, I want you to stay listening to this station. And I also want to have this conversation with you on air for everybody to hear, because I respect you. But there are other things that 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 you are missing. Maybe there are things that I'm missing as well, but there are certain very important factors as far as power is concerned and how government works that you're missing. So let's talk, continue the conversation. Okay, Uma? Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. Uh, Let's go to Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. Real quick, Johnny. I don't have a lot of time. 30 seconds. Hey, real quick. Uh, I understand your position. You are a host whose message reaches more than just a statewide audience, more than just a red state. So you have to be more considerate. I, on the other hand, am a voter in a red state of Texas, and I happen to be a progressive. And to contradict not Uma, but the other caller, uh, the two, the first one we call who talked about herself being pragmatic, Pragmatic, a pragmatic is more uh, inclusive to think that progressives like me in a red state have to send a message at the ballot box because when we have failed to get them to reach back to us after repeated mailings, emailings, registered mail, uh, all kinds of all manner of communication, you know it's a serious situation. And then to see Kamala Harris, she had two major opportunities on national TV, the Democratic Convention and the debate to signal to people like me that she was serious about the leadership and she's proving more and more to be going to the right more and more. She's now talking about having uh, Republicans on her cabinet. No mention at all. Not even one progressive in her cabinet. This is serious stuff. And I understand your, your, your responsibilities, but I have a responsibility because the only power I have is right now before the election. And after the election is decided, no matter who gets into the White House, guess what? I told you this before. We're all going to have to hit the streets. Thank you, Janet. I, 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 I have a pushback for you, but I don't have the time to do it right now. But I understand what you're saying. We'll talk tomorrow. Let's go to Steve. Go to Steve. Steve, 30 seconds. All right, let's go to Tag. Tag, 30 seconds. I'm sorry, I'm really out of time. Yeah, quickly, uh, we need to contemplate the difference between driving the bus or riding on the bus. And Kamala has been riding on the bus for four years, and Biden's been driving the bus. Once you let Kamala drive that bus, it's going to be a whole different scenario. So I want people to think about that when they're saying that Kamala has not been doing the job. She has not been driving the damn bus. So that's it. Tag. 
Tag, very, very uh, since thank you for taking uh, such a little bit of time. Very pragmatic, and there's an instance of, right now. You have to you have to say things and cater your message so that you are electable. That's all I'm going to say. But I, I'll have to further discuss that another time when we have more time. Thank you, Tag, for your short conversation. Let's go to Brian. Thanks, Egberto. Have a good. Thank you, thank you, brother. Uh, come on in, Brian. Yeah, I want to personally thank the two people that donated to your show this morning. Uh, that was a good choice. Uh, also, the left cannot be for women's rights if they let a biological male compete in a same sporting event. Uh, that's that's contradictory to uh, the women's rights when they let uh, a boxer beat the crap out of a woman and say, yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's all I Anything got. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Brian. All right, folks. Uh, thank you. You have a wonderful day. Hey, folks, please give us a call at 713-526-5738, extension number one. We do need your support. Hey, uh, let me, <laughs> I want to speak to brother Neil. Neil? <laughs> well, I would, I would just say what, um, what, what agitated me was a suggestion that a certain amount of money or people were controlling things. And, and I, I, I couldn't let that go because I, I, got I couldn't you. let that I, I, go. I, 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 I understand. I, under, I understand. Uh, I understand. We'll talk about that, you know, further on. And I, I tell you what, if another day you want to come into the show to kind of further discuss that, let me run to the studio before Neil closes out uh, studio. Oh, nothing here. Uh, just have a great day. Had a lively, uh, lively discussion. Jack, what you got? Well, uh, you can vote your conscience and lose your democracy. The evil that is Trump is a known factor. And that would be Jack. <laughs> there you go, Jack. All right, come on in, Neil. I urge people to pledge to, um, to politics done right. You can do so. You can do so off, off hours when the show's not on. Um, uh, I urge people to contribute to politics done right. Egberto, everything he says about uh, the callers, about preparing for the show, it's all correct. Uh, it's the off-air persona as well as the on-air persona, and um, I would ask folks to uh, to contribute and keep keep the voice going. And one thing that will always happen is that there'll always there'll always be a forum here for whoever wishes to call, and you'll never get that forum uh, elsewhere. Yeah, p- uh, please uh, tell us how to get to you, Neil. I want people to know about you. And I'm at HoustonDemocracyProject.com, HoustonDemocracy project uh, dot com and there's a daily blog and i am active in many other ways as as well thank you so i gotta wrap up 713-526-5738-713-526-5738 extension number one tell them it's for politics and rent or go to kpft.org hit that donate button and when you hit that donate button select politics and right give whatever you can we are 300 dollars short folks please don't let it end this way go to politics and right that or rather uh, the rest of the show is at politics and right slash newsletter politics and right dot com slash newsletter my name is egberto willis this is politics done right i love you i thank you so much callers i want to continue that engaged conversation my name is Alberto this is politics done right i know how we end this baby i am what out support for this show politics done right comes from politics right.com publishers of how to make america utopia take away the economy from those who rigged it as i see it class warfare the only resort to right-wing doom it's worth it how to talk to your right-wing relatives friends and neighbors and other books written by Egberto Willis.